Good evening, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. This is Rich again, back for your third and final video blog of the night for Sunday, October 4th, 2015, about 8.16 in the evening, Bellwick, Massachusetts. Sun went down. It's going to be a little bit of a chilly night. Highs about lows of around 41, 42. Southern New Hampshire's under a frost advisory, so people living in that area bring the, the vegetation and stuff like that. Still no hot freezes in the Boston area for a while. Some news to report. The Cleveland Indians beat the Boston Red Sox by a score of 3-1, sweeping the Red Sox three straight games. Red Sox finished in the 2015 season with a 78-84 record. And for the third time in four years, the Red Sox are in the basement of the American League East. That's not good. Hopefully 2016 will be better. Last Red Sox game called by Don Orsillo and Jerry Remy. Orsillo's going to San Diego, and there's rumors that Jerry Remy might be departing as well. Also, the Texas Rangers won the American League Western Division title, and uh, Houston Astros won the second AL wild card. The LA Angels of Anaheim have been eliminated from playoff contention. And the AL um, wild card game is Tuesday. It's the Astros against the uh, Yankees. And Wednesday, it's the uh, Pirates versus not the Cubs versus the Pirates in the NL. Um, wild card game and uh, divisional round starts Thursday on Fox Sports 1 for American League and Friday National League on TBS the National League Division Series that's about it on the news and my third and final video blog subject of the night is the personality profile tonight's personality profile is Cleveland Indians manager Terry Francona Terry Francona has been managing for about 19 years in the big leagues on and off. He's a great manager. He's won two World Series championships with when he was with the Boston Red Sox. And he also was a former Major League Baseball player. Terry was born in Aberdeen, South Dakota. And he grew up in New Br Brighton, Pennsylvania. His father was named... Was was a big league ball player for 15 seasons, Tito Francona, and that was Terry's nickname, T Tito. Tito, and um, Terry Francona played baseball in high school. He was a very very good player. Then he played baseball at the University of Arizona, and he was a very very awesome playing high school in college. He he was on the championship team for. Arizona in 1984 College World Series. He won the Golden Spikes Award for 1980. He played the infield and the outfield. He was a highly trod and major league prospect. The Montreal Expos drafted Terry Francona in the first round, the 22nd overall in the baseball's amateur draft. He only spent one year in the minor leagues. He was a great minor league baseball player. The the Montreal Expo called him up in 1981, and he had a journeyman career and stuff. He did not live up to the hype as in like college and stuff, and he bounced around from team to team. He played for the Expo, Cubs, Reds, Indians, and Brewers, having a 273 career average, 16 home runs, and 143 RBIs. He never made an all-star team. He was basically like a utility player during his big league career. A lot of disappointment because he, being hyped as a great college player. A lot of experts says he would have had an awesome career, but it never was meant to be in the big leagues for him as a star player. Then after he t retired in 1990, he went into coaching. He coached several years in the minor leagues for, with the White Sox system and stuff. He actually managed um, Michael Jordan, the famous basketball player, in the minor leagues for Double A Birmingham in 1994. Then in 1996, Terry Francona, like, um, was the was a, a third base coach for the Tigers in 1996. In 1997, Terry Francona got his first managerial job 
with the Philadelphia Phillies. And he managed them for four years, but they did not have a winning record during his tenure and stuff. But he managed um, Kurt Schilling during that time in 2001. Um, Terry was a special assistant to the general manager for the Cleveland Indians. He was a bench coach for the Texas Rangers in 2002. And in 2003, he was a bench coach for uh, uh, in Oakland age. But he we really wanted to manage an, a major league team again, get a second chance and stuff. And then he was named the Red Sox manager in 2004. And he managed the Red Sox for eight seasons, leading up to... Two World Series championships, 2004 and 2007, five playoff appearances, and he ha and many times the Red Sox had talented teams with t with Terry Francona managing them. Um, he had like Big Poppy and Manny Morales and Pedro Martinez and Kurt Schilling, um, Derek Lowe. David Wells, this goes on and on, great talent and stuff. Terry Francona in a Red Sox uniform, never won manager of the year, but he was like in the top folk getting and stuff. And the Red Sox had a great relationship with Terry Francona until 2011. That's the year when the Red Sox had a big lead in the AL wild card in September, but the clubhouse was out of control and stuff because they was drinking beer and having fried chicken. They probably had the fried chicken that was delivered to them by the Popeyes probably across the street from Fenway Park and the Red Sox went into a collapse that year. They did not make the playoffs. They got eliminated the last day of the season and somebody had to be blamed. They can't fire the players. They did not renew Terry Francona's contract for the upcoming year 2012 that devastated Red Sox nation and stuff. It was a trying time for Terry Francona during this time. He was having some health issues. Plus, in addition, he and his wife was on the verge of separating. He didn't like the Boston media um, about them gossiping and being about that. Terry went into broadcasting. He worked for a year at ESPN Sunday Night Baseball as an analyst and he took the job of of like Bobby Ballantyne who managed the Red Sox who went to manage the Red Sox for one year but that was a disaster and stuff and Terry, Terry came back to managing again in 2013 and he managed the Cleveland Indians the first year the Cleveland and he managed the Cleveland Indians he won over 90 games and led them to a um, playoff spot. He won 2013 Manager of the Year for the American League finally. And he's been managing ever since. The Indians have had, had 500 seasons in 2014 and 2015. Indians are continuing to build a great ball club. Many experts are saying that the Indians could be a, a top contender for the World Series in the next few years because of the talented pitching staff and the players coming up, but the fans in Cleveland don't go to these games and stuff like that. And but you never know if they start if they start winning, winning consistently, then the fans will come and stuff like that. Terry has over twelve hundred career wins and about like eleven hundred and like forty five losses. His playoff record is twenty eight and eighteen. And when Terry retires from managing, he's probably going to be a Hall of Fame manager if he wins another World Series title, which that could happen. You never know. Maybe in 2016 or 2017. That's about it on Terry Francona. That's about it on these video blogs, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Tomorrow you're going to get three of them. Tomorrow there'll be no top ten list. Because the first video blog will be about a preview of the two thousand my predictions the two thousand fifteen Major League Baseball playoffs. Second video blog, my opinion if the NFL should put a team in London, England permanently. And the third and final video blog of the night will be about the personality profile. Tomorrow's personality profile will be about the voice of the WWE, Michael Cole, and lots of great video blogs coming soon. Wednesday, I'm going to have the first ever 
monthly NHL power rankings. Every month during the NHL season, we're going to have a power rankings on the top 10 teams uh, going into the 2015-2016 NHL season. And more. Keep calm, everybody. And I'm a Julie Button guy. Julie brought the news 6, 4 p.m. anchor of the news. She rocks and has nice legs. Molly Rosenblatt rocks and has nice legs as well. Amy Swinsey rocks. Elizabeth Hart, so, so stunning. Heidi Pratt has the nicest legs in the world. And in the words of Bruce Crofton, diehard Yankees fan, want to put a wager on that, Richie. See you later. See you tomorrow. Bye now.